Hi guys, it's Nurse Howie, and guess what? I am in Vegas. I was actually supposed to be going to Los Angeles for my lecture on opioid intervention. However, my plane got diverted. And so, now I decided to, well, I already missed my conference anyway. Um, and it's too bad because it's for school and it's, you know, quite a few points on my grade. So I'm really kind of pissed off about that. But what can you do? You know, this is the life of a travel nurse. I am at the mercy of every flight that comes down. Um, so what, what I'm going to do is that here's what I did. I asked for my flight to be reinstated and um, the next flight that they had was going through Vegas. And then I had to wait four hours for a layover before I went back to LA. But I was really doing nothing in LA because I was spending, I was supposed to spend the whole day doing my opioid intervention class or a seminar at the university, but it didn't happen. <laughs> so I convinced the um, uh, the plane, uh, the plane workers. Oh God, what do you call those guys? People in the boarding areas. Um, the not the travel agents, but the people that work for the plane. Come on, guys, help me out here. Ugh. Not the flight attendants, not the pilots, but, you know, people behind the counter. And basically I asked, I said, look, you're going to send me to Vegas. Can you just make the Vegas to LAX trip the next day? And I said, oh, so basically you just want a free ticket? So basically you just wanted a free ticket to the next day so you can stay over Vegas? And I was like, well, yeah, basically that's what I was wanted. They, they go, oh, I have to ask. And then they checked it out and they said, okay. And I was like, oh, my God. It, Thank you so much. And they were so, so nice and professional. Um, and they were a little bit annoyed because there was a lot of people there. But, you know, they they accommodated me. So after I got the ticket, I bought the hotel room. And it's really nice. You know, usual Vegas rooms uh, require, uh, you know, like people to show off the rooms. I check out the... Uh, the bathroom too. It's really nice. I like it. Uh, anyway, it's really roomy. I get kind of lost, and there's a bathroom with uh, basically it's another room in there. I don't know what I'm gonna do with a see-through shower, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, king room. This is what I do, okay? So this is what happens with, I mean, I'm, I'm already like this, but nursing life, travel nursing life has already done this to me in that it has already made me very resourceful and willing to adapt to anything because as a travel nurse, even though I was hired for PCU, uh, tele, and sometimes ICU, I almost always am just usually just in med surge or med surge tele, you know, something where that requires a uh, little more stable patients, but a lot more of them. And you know what? Screw everybody else that's like, oh, I'm an emergency room nurse, or I'm only an ICU nurse. Ooh, if you ever worked at a med surge, you will see everything. And it's, it may not be a very, un, you know, very unstable patients, but there are so many of them. And they have families, and they want to talk to you, and they want to get the blanket now, and they want to get their meds now. And oops, I forgot to tell you I'm in pain, so I want some pain meds now. You know what? That's real nursing. And any nurse that can go back and forth from specialty nursing to floor nursing to whatever, I admire you because you have to learn not only how to handle patients from all walks of life, but you also have to handle all kinds of different nursing attitudes, nurse management, and also the bane of my existence when it comes to travel nursing, knowing the codes for the supply room. So, <laughs> I mean, this is what I do. I just decided to just have a micro vacation day. Um, everything had already been shot up to hell. I could whine about it or I could do something about it and just enjoy my time. So here I am in Vegas. Uh, so one of the clerks asked me what I was going to do tonight because it's the first Friday and I am thinking about partying but you know what my flight is tomorrow too. I didn't want to make it another two days because I also have the, a large exam that's coming up on Monday and I want to study for that because priorities. Um, but mostly I just want to sleep and it's really really nice. Nice, nice, nice king bed. <laughs> uh, all right, well, I'm going to talk about some tips, um, including uh, the numerous other situations that you have to do when you're a travel nurse, which I call also a professional floor nurse, a professional float nurse. 
Um, and usually when you're in ICU or even the ED or um, a real telemetry unit, you're going to probably sit down for a, to become a telemonitor if there's not enough tele telemetry monitors around. Case in point, a lot of the telemetry monitors uh, came with me and they're part of my travel agency uh, when we all got hired to the hospital. So they are in need of a lot of telemetry techs. Apparently there was some kind of incident where a patient was not on telemetry and they didn't discover the patient in time the patient died. So now all the hospitals are gearing up to make sure that they have enough telemetry tech. So now they're hiring travel telemetry tech. So if you are a telemetry, tra uh, telemetry tech and you're thinking of some doing something um, prior to nursing or medicine <clears throat> that doesn't involve being a CNA or, any, or LVN, try telemetry tech. Um, they make decent money as a travel uh, travel telemetry tech and not all of them travel that far. Um, as long as you're 50 miles away from your uh, permanent home address, you can get the stipend um, for housing and you can add that as an extra to your pay, especially if you want to uh, commute on your own instead of using the housing. Um, you can just pocket that extra housing money, but that's all I know about that. So yeah, I want to talk about, here's the stuff that I want to make videos on. I want to make videos on how to handle the psychology of floor nursing because there are a lot of attitudes out there, not including, uh, including not just patients, but also um, the staff that you work with. Uh, I also want to talk about how to be a uh, an effective telemetry tech. I only know the basics, but I definitely know, I've learned a lot and um, nobody's complained about it so far so I want to pass that on to anybody who's a new grad who is asked to be a telemetry tech and you have no clue what to do. I also want to talk about um, um, the general success successful tips that I've learned to uh, float into other units because you may not know what hospital I uh, what float what, where, where you're going to float as a float nurse, um, but you do need to pick up as if you already know and you already belong there. So I found some good tips to tell you exactly what you need to know, including how to get, how to get and give effective shift reports, as well as how to anticipate and how to um, these different time management skills that they didn't tell you about nursing school and even other. Um, videos out on YouTube, this specific time management skills like what to do if you've already run out of time or what to do if you've been full to a unit with only three hours, here's how to save your butt without getting in trouble. So hang on to that. I'm going to go take a little nappy nap, catch up on my rest, and I'll be making up some more new videos for you, okay? All right, you guys, subscribe, annotate, uh, put down some comments down below, um, and uh, follow me, click on the bell for notification for Nurse Howie, and we'll see you. Cheesy.